everyone, it's Kathy Zilski from kathyzilski.com back with another installment of Kathy Makes a Card. Today, I'm excited to show you a watercolor technique that I am pretty much obsessed with and the polygon die that I am using to make these cards is so fun and you can do so many things with it and I am not afraid to show you. So let's get started. I'm starting out today with some Distress Ink painting. Now I'm using a piece of uh, Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock, but I like the smooth side. And I've got my Distress sprayer and my inks. I've got spun sugar, worn lipstick, picked raspberry, festive berries, and spiced marmalade. Now this is just a partial rainbow. If you're afraid to work with the whole rainbow, just pick one area of the rainbow. So I went with pinks. Now what I'm gonna do is just smush a bunch of these down into the craft mat. And again, I, I learned this from watching other videos. I learned this from watching Christina Werner videos. I learned this from watching Laura Bastin videos because I am new and I am learning, but boy, there's, you know, they do good stuff. So I'm smashing it all in there and I did include that orange just because I wanted a little pop of something else and I do think that pink and orange, they just look so good together. They're right next to each other on the color wheel. It's a natural fit, just to add a little more interest. Now, once I've got it down, I'm gonna take the Distress Sprayer and just get it really wet. Just get it till it all starts bubbling up. And, and now I'm gonna take my the smooth side of the watercolor cardstock, flip it over, and just press it down. Just let it, and, it, and just ooze it out the side, kind of run it around. The whole process is just a matter of layering colors. So this, people, this is layer number one. So I'll flip it over and I get this really nice soft sort of look and kind of can see how the colors have gone onto the paper. Pick up a little, drip it off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dry it with my heat tool. And I have this lovely little Minnesota board that I dry everything on because I learned the hard way that my, my mat underneath will warp. Thank you. So I'm gonna keep going, take a couple more colors, wet them down, smash them in, flip, dry, etc. Now, you can keep doing this smush and wet down process, you know, just keep drying in between each step. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start painting. So I'm gonna look at what I've got and pick a couple more colors. So I'm gonna go with the, is it the picked raspberry? And I'm gonna use a brush this time, just a big fat brush, get it really wet with the color, and then just sort of smush it down. Now this too, I learned from watching a video from Laura Bass, and she calls it her Lucy Goosey slap down. And indeed, you it is Lucy Goosey, because you're really just putting color until it feels good. You know, until it feels good. And repeat. And so this is the process. You get that piece of watercolor paper, you keep layering in your color until, you know, until it looks right. Once it looks right, I can't tell you what that is. It's, it's really a unique and personal thing for every person. But I just kept layering in. And when I was done, it was time to do big globs of water onto the paper. And I kind of got some real heavy ones in the lower area. I kind of wanted to soften the orange. But I love what happens to Distress Ink when you add water and you bring in your paper towel, just kind of blot that off. And when you lift it up, it's the magical reveal of <gasps> that. Love that look. So now I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. Now this polygon cover plate dive from Neat and Tangled is the coolest. And it took me a while to figure it out, but how I'm gonna start out today using it is I'm going to cut it out of a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, the 80 pound weight. And I found from experience I needed a metal shim. Had to get the shim because the shim was just gonna give me a cleaner cut. And that can be the case with intricate dies. You just, if you have the metal shim, depending on how old your plates are and whatnot, it can help get a cleaner cut. So once I got this cut, I just uh, loosened it up a little and just kind of started popping out the pieces because I don't want the pieces I want the frame on this one because this is going to be the frame that holds all of my beautiful colored pieces. 
Now, one thing I notice when it comes out, there's always a little straggler of paper, you know, little little threads, little threads hanging. So I just take, it's almost like I'm lint rolling cat hair. I, that's what it, that's basically what I'm doing, just to get that as clean as possible. Now I'm gonna make a card base and I have this uh, Stampin' Up score tool, which is huge. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and get that card base. And the card base that I'm using is the 110 pound Nina Solar White. That's something new that I just discovered. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So now it's time to use spray adhesive. And I will tell you this, I did this outside people. I did not spray this in my house because it was just, yeah. But this is new. I just discovered spray adhesive and a very light hand. And then boom, my white cutout goes on the card. Now it's time to repeat. And this is where I get nervous because I've got this beautiful piece of watercolored paper, this, this masterpiece. But I've done this enough times, I kinda, I kinda know what I'm doing now. Trust me, I've had a lot of errors along the way. But one of the things that I try to do is put, you know, wiggle the plate a little because I wanna bring the plate off and keep the pieces in order. It's just easier. You could take some press and seal and put it on the reverse side of your, once it comes off the machine and it would probably hold it easier. I just kind of wiggled it off because it's just easier to begin the process of filling it in. So I'm just using basic, the two-way zig glue and this is the process. Fill in the glue in the space. Get that nice and juicy and then just pick up your little piece. I, I like the pick-me-up tool. It helps me to grab stuff, place it in. You're basically filling in a puzzle with all of the, of the, is it the negative, the positive of the cut. So you're not gonna use the frame, you're gonna use the positive spaces. And I would have showed you that in time-lapse, but you might've gotten dizzy. So I opted just to say, it took me 25 minutes, okay? I'm not gonna try to pretend like I do this this quickly. But yeah, this is the process. You take this beautiful colored, watercolored masterpiece you cut it apart in this way and then you reassemble it. And that white of the background there that you can see all of those even margins. Now, if you've ever seen me talk about design in any way, shape or form, little rivers of space that are equal between anything, it just, it just makes for a really impactful, unified, beautiful design. And so using this cover plate to create that white frame space, oh, it's amazing. So yeah, getting the last little bit in here and just pressing it all down. And once that glue dries, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty solid. And then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine once, just because I really wanna sandwich it in there and really, really make it feel smooth and flat. But isn't that pretty? It's pretty. And look at what you have left over. You can do something with that. Something. Okay. Now the card needs a sentiment. So I'm gonna take a little flag die from Stampin' Up! from this little set called Bunch of Banners Framelits. And I'm gonna pick a sentiment from my set called Simple Sentiments. And I wanna make sure that it is a sentiment that will fit that flag size, okay? So I've got, I'm gonna line it up here and, and the one that I picked, let's see. Yeah, there's the frame. And I just wanted to double check it so I'm sticking that in there. Yep, it's gonna be good. Doesn't have to be lined up on here. That's the beauty of uh, die cutting something out. I, I'm, it's much easier for me to die cut a sentiment than to hand cut it. But I'm gonna prep my area with my anti-static tool and I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy ready for stamping. Got my lovely heavy duty magnet. Oh, and of course I'm using the Misty tool. You guys know, know about a Misty? What I say about a Misty? Get a freaking Misty. Seriously, if I tried to stamp this free range just on my own, would I, I can guarantee you it would be smushed and uneven, but the Misty, ah, perfection. So now I'm just adding a little bit of Hero Arts white embossing powder. Get that on there, tap off the excess, and then I'm gonna heat set it. And I'm getting better at heat setting where I don't warp my paper every time. And once it's heat set, I'm gonna go ahead and put that little flag banner down. I'm gonna run it through the die machine. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pop off one of the sides because I want it to be a flag that has, you know, a perpendicular side. So I use, um, you can use your paper trimmer. I just, I'm pretty handy with an X-Acto knife. <laughs> it's kind of one of my skills. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of foam adhesive on the back to sort of get that just a little dimension off the card. And then it's time to put that right on the card. Ah! And I love, I love the hot pink. I love putting it over the orange because it gives a little more contrast. But the card is not done because I have discovered these lovely drops from uh, Pretty Pink Posh. And I have my glossy accents. And so I've just sort of laid them out where I want them to go. Um, I like things in threes because it's a visual triangle and yeah, and it's a designy thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and add them. Now here's the thing, I love the pick me up tool. I think it's so cool, but I have been watching people do videos where they, they pick them up and they put it right down. It never comes off the tool for me. So maybe in the comments, you can let me know, Kath, here's what you need to do. But I like it for picking stuff up. Not sure if I like it for putting them down as much because I had to get my, my, my mitts in there. But once I was done, ah, oh, the drops, it's so pretty. It's just, it's just a riot of color and I love it. So I hope that you are inspired to try making a watercolor card like this, because I figure if someone like me who has never painted in her whole life can do this, anyone can do this. Plus that polygon cover plate die, forget about it. Thank you so much for watching today. Please subscribe to my channel and check out more videos in the center. To see more from me, visit my website today. Thanks everyone and have a great day.